Hey everybody, working on a uh, Denso SH7058 ECU. In the last video, we used Ghidra and Winnells to find our DTC hex table and some surrounding tables that we just named DCT1 through 19. In this video, we're going to be using Ghidra and this map to actually bring us to sensor scalers. It took a lot of messing around before I finally figured out what I was looking at. Uh, my process that I used was diagnostic software conditions to find DTCs. I started searching these values in Ghidra as a, a decimal float. You know, a lot of these, like 850, you're going to find thousands of them. Um, 16, less of them, but still a lot. It never looks in Ghidra like what you expect to see here. You know, I see a lot of like 550s to 800 that end up being conditioned to set for this DTC, even though the diagnostic software says this. So this was the first one that I felt pretty confident I found something pertaining to it. I went to Ghidra and I did a search of 7.5. It's not a common number that I find in my decimal or in my um, binary file. So decimal float 7.5, I hit search all. And just started looking through. So this, this isn't it. It's 7.5. It's going to be a float. It's going to be contained in like a 3D map or something like that. But that's not what we're looking for. There's another one. Okay. 3D map of some sort. 3D map. Oh, that's injection. Quantity. Um, 3D maps or 2D. Could be a 2. Okay. So this is what we were looking for. This is the first one that I found. You can see I already labeled it. It is referenced by this, which I labeled. Like I was saying, not a lot of information here. It's not what I was wanting to find, but is what I, I did notice was if FR2 is above or below negative or positive 7.5, a condition happens. Prior to finding this function, I, I searched a lot of different floating point numbers. Um, I found a lot of different things that looked like they might be related to a DTC, but they were never what I expected to find and it slowly lowered my expectation of what I was looking for. I was willing to take more risk as time went on and, and I decided I'm gonna call this the condition to set P2227 performance. I started looking at it deeper. What is it doing with these values? It sets a one or a zero into this function. And then the outcome of it is U bar three. Okay. So then I clicked on this and hit decimal and I saw that 107 and this is where things happened, right? So I saw that 107 and luckily I clued in and I said, well, hang on a second. 107 is 22. Two, seven. And this is when, you know, it just all clicked. I was super excited. So I went back to IDSS. Where did I get that 7.5 above or below from? From P2227. This was a big moment. I labeled this DTC finder. Okay. I went to it. I went to all of its reference points and just one after another, I started digging through them. Some don't make a lot of sense, but most do. You find this seven here, okay? And you plug it into Winnell's DTC map. Find seven, PO088. Fuel rail pressure too high. Well, what does it say about fuel rail pressure? It says condition for setting 185 for longer than 10 seconds or 230 any time during ignition cycle after first stage has occurred, okay? So let's go back to Ghidra and see what we see. 230 to 234. We're back to that same deal where you don't always get exactly what you want, but we're gonna say this is its instantaneous set of DTC 0088. Another thing that we can infer from this is this is obviously fuel rail pressure, FR1, and now we know to call this function fuel rail pressure. Every last function that we find that references this rail pressure, we know that FR1 is actual rail pressure. It's all assumption until you uh, prove yourself right or wrong. 
Here's another one that helped me find the IAT functions. UVAR1, UVAR2, look at the function. You can determine that these are AIT sensor one and sensor two. Okay, parameter one minus parameter two, return. Okay, so that's UVAR2 minus UVAR1, data equals 38 is less than this. We'll set DTC, P2199. Ooh, look at this. That's our 38. Temperature, intake air temperature two is more than 38 degrees over the intake air temperature one for longer than eight seconds. Okay, that's exactly what we have here. So we know that one of these is one and the other one is two. Again, now anytime we ever see these IATs, we know that UVAR7 is IAT. We know that FR5 is IAT. It's a big deal, guys. After a time of, of doing that, you know, it's taken a while, um, I came to the realization that every single one has some relationship to DTC table five, so-called. We have 69 references to it. So we went to this, and this is where things really started speeding up and moving along. So I found this function. I realized, well, 32 and 31, 30, 29, 59, 159, 158. Um, when you plug those into this DTC map, so 159, 158, well, those are two codes right next to each other. Okay, so we have a 2454. Okay, 2454 and 2455. Those are both circuit DTC, so circuit low, circuit high. That makes a lot of sense to handle those in the same function. Um, that created a pattern it, it over and over again that stood true. So it gave me the confidence to uh, check this out. So this, for instance, so within this function, we see a 43 and a 44. So let's go check, check Winnells. 43 and 44 are 117, 118. IDSS, 117, 118. Engine coolant sensor low high. We can see that it's a DTC PO17. Okay, so let's look at all these reference points. Um, and mind you, when I first came across this, it was all hexadecimal, right? So you go in, you right click, decimal, right click, decimal, right click. Sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know why. It just, I don't know. I don't care. Is what I care about is this right here. So here is one of my 2D no scalar is what this structure is. Now we copy this right here. We plug it into Winnells. Okay, it's already identified as a map. That looks like it. So at 4.73 volts, we're negative 40 degrees. And at uh, 0.17 volts, we're 130. Guys, this is a big deal. Okay, so this right here is ECT scalar. This is huge, guys. So we found ECT scalar. Okay, let's just pop out and go find another one. We'll copy this real quick and uh, just drop it down here. And then next time we wanna come back here, we just click on it. All right, so here's a good one. Okay, so we have 32 and 31. We plug that. 41 D and C. PO 41 D and C. EGR EGT 2. So we called it EGR EGT. We're going to put a 2 on there. Okay. We're going to check this. Copy that. Hit Winnells. Okay. And so the second sensor is after the cooler. So this makes sense, that being 400 degrees Celsius. That seems right. So there's our battery voltage, zero to five volts, and our 400 
to negative 40 centigrade EGR EGT2. We're just we're we're moving guys. Okay, 155 and 154, 2032 and 2033. Okay, that's EGT2. 19 in decimal. Okay, that looks right. Zero to 1000 degrees centigrade, 0.21 to 4.97 volts. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a pretty good quick little way of figuring out your sensor scalers by using your DTC map to find it. If you guys stuck around this long, hit like and subscribe. Feel free to ask any questions or make any comments. I'll be watching for those. And thank you for watching.